Once upon a time, there was a village called Dancing. A group of young girls and boys lived in that village. Every night after dinner, they would light a fire and dance around it. One evening, a monkey came to the dance, wearing smart clothes and a stylish hat. He came and sat in a corner on a stone. No one recognized that he was a monkey. He also played melodious music with his drums. Every night, the monkey would come and play and the girls dance with him happily. The girls loved him more each day. They also started showering him with gifts. One of them gave him a ring and the other gave him cookies. The boys were extremely jealous as the attention of all the girls was always focused on the monkey. Who is this new fellow and what is he doing in our village? The boys asked one another and decided to keep a close eye on him. That night, they watched him quietly from a distance. The boys simply could not believe their eyes when they saw that the person the girls loved so much was a monkey in reality. It had a hairy body and a long tail. That night, the guys laughed their hearts out and finally slept peacefully. The boys decided to play a prank on the monkey. They burned some wood and put it around the stone where the monkey sat every day and covered it with leaves. Like every evening, the monkey came and sat on its usual place. Only this time, it did not feel the same. Ouch! screamed the monkey and jumped from its seat. The hot stone had burnt his bottom through his pants. The monkey jumped into a bucket full of water to comfort himself. The boys laughed at the girls for falling for a monkey and told them how they had taught him a lesson. When the girls got to know what the boys had done, they scolded the boys and said that it didn't matter if he was a monkey or a boy. What mattered was that he was a kind soul and a good friend. They asked the boys to go and apologize to the monkey. But it was too late. The monkey had already left the village to never come back. Ever since, monkeys have had red bottoms. One day, all the mother animals of the jungle had a serious argument. All of them were really proud of their little ones and each one of them felt that their kids were the best among all. They were, however, trying to find out which one of them had the largest brood. The mother deer, who was affectionately licking her three little babies, said, It's definitely me. I have the best and the largest brood. Certainly not. Look at my babies. How sharp their teeth are said Mother Jackal. All her five cubs immediately bared their fangs. Rest of the animals got scared and moved away. But Mother Jackal assured them that the cubs wouldn't harm anyone. Mother Sparrow flew up to her nest, flapping its wings and said, I have nine little birdies. That's more than both of yours put together. The tiny little birds tweeted, putting their heads out. But none of you can match my record, said Mother Cat, pointing at her little kitten army. Your babies are not even worth being counted, said somebody from the crowd. Mother Cat got angry and said something back. One argument led to another and soon it ended up in complete chaos. Finally, they all decided to go to Mother Lion to settle the argument. We all have so many babies, but we do not know who has the largest brood. What about you? One of the animals asked Mother Lion. I just have one, said Mother Lion, and looked at the little cub with pride. The cub ran about innocently around its mother. 
Just one? That's all? Asked the animal surprised. Yes, that's all, said Mother Lion, smiling. I have just one cub and it will become the king of the jungle one day. Why do I even need a larger brood? All the mother animals became quiet and realized that in future the lion cub would matter much more than all of their offspring put together. Once upon a time, not so long ago, a great number of mice lived in a grocer's shop. They ate fresh, tasty wheat, rice, bread, cheese and biscuits kept in the shop. They were having a great time and living easy, comfortable lives, growing fatter day by day. However, the grocer was concerned about the losses that he was suffering because of the damage done to his stock by the mice. So, he thought of a solution and brought a big fat cat to keep in his shop. From that day onwards, the cat began to catch the mice every day. The mice were terrified of stepping out of their holes. They could not reach the food anymore. This was a great cause of worry for them. They decided to call a meeting of all the mice in the shop to discuss this problem. They got together and started thinking. One of them suggested that they get rid of the fat cat. But no one could think of a way to do so. So they kept thinking of other ways. Finally, one mouse spoke up. We should tie a bell around the cat's neck. That way, whenever the cat is near or is coming in our direction, we would get to know by the ringing of the bell and we can quickly run back to our holes. This idea was appreciated by all the other mice. They thought it was the best plan. They began dancing and celebrating with joy. But their celebrations did not last very long. For soon, an old wise mouse said, You fools, stop celebrating and first tell me, who will bell the cat? None of the mice had an answer to this question. They had not thought about this major problem in their seemingly perfect plan. This is why it is said that making a plan is one thing, but executing it is an entirely different thing. The Lion and the Rabbit there once lived a very ferocious lion in the middle of a dense forest. He was very greedy and roamed around freely, killing any animal he came across. Tired of living in fear, the frightened animals gathered together to find a solution. This can't go on forever, they complained. After much discussion, they decided to send one animal every day to the lion. In return, the lion promised to stop his reckless killing. As the days went by, it was the turn of the rabbits to send someone. Among them was a wise rabbit who volunteered to go. He had a plan in store for the greedy lion. Wanting to annoy the lion, the rabbit decided to make the lion wait for his meal. When evening came... That's it! roared the lion. I'm not going to keep my promise. I am going to kill the first animal I see. By sunset, the wise rabbit reached the den and the angry lion roared at him in anger. Why are you late? I am sorry, your majesty, said the rabbit, but I was on my way when another lion chased me down and declared he was the true king of the jungle. I escaped somehow and managed to get here. Enraged, the lion roared. Take me to this 
foolish challenger to my throne. The rabbit led him to an old brick well. Take a look inside, said the rabbit. The lion looked inside and saw another lion staring right back at him. He roared and growled at the challenger. Naturally, the other lion, being his reflection, roared back. His roar was mightier and louder. This went on for a while, till the egotistic lion couldn't take it any more. He jumped into the well to kill the rival lion and was drowned instantly. The clever rabbit returned to his friends to celebrate the end of the greedy lion. The Blue Jackal Long ago there lived a cunning little jackal. One day, driven by hunger, he strayed into a village in search of food. On seeing him, a group of dogs ran after him, barking and snarling. Terrified, he dashed into the house of a dyer and accidentally fell into a tub of blue dye. The jackal was stained blue from head to toe. Later, when he got back to the jungle, all the animals stared at him in shock. They had never seen such a strange and beautiful animal before. Seeing everyone confused, the jackal thought of an idea. He proclaimed that he was sent to rule over the animal kingdom and guard its animals. The animals fell for it and proclaimed him king. The jackal, as king, then appointed the lion as his advisor, the tiger as his guardian, and the elephant as his doorkeeper. But his work was not done. For fear of being recognized, he drove all the jackals out of the forest. The new king then ordered his subjects to hunt for him and do his bidding. The animals used to bring all kinds of fruits and meat for him, and the blue king lived a life of luxury. One day, as the blue king was enjoying himself, a pack of jackals passed by and began howling. Unable to control his natural instinct, the Blue King rose up and howled to glory. Hearing his cry, the jungle animals realized they had been fooled. At once, they chased the traitor out of the forest, and the cunning jackal never returned again. The Heron and the Crab A long time ago there lived a heron by the side of a pond, brimming with fresh fish. He was a lazy creature who wanted to find a way to catch all the fish without any effort. One day he got an idea. He went to the side of the pond and put on a gloomy face. His friend the crab came alongside him and asked, What is bothering you, my dear friend? The heron said, Alas, my friends, I spotted fishermen making hungry nets in the village nearby. Soon they will come to our pond to catch all the fish. On hearing this, the inhabitants of the pond were devastated. The heron continued, Luckily, I know of a pond not far from here where all the fish will be safe. So, every day, some fish would volunteer to be carried in the heron's beak to the safe pond. The heron would take the fish each day and, on reaching a large rock, he would eat all the fish. 
leaving nothing but their bones behind. For many days, the sly heron got a continuous supply of fish without any effort. But the wise crab got suspicious of the heron's motives and, one day, volunteered to go with the heron to the new pond. As they were flying, the crab was shocked to see his friend's bones lying around the rock. He realised there was something fishy going on, but chose to wait and watch. The heron took the crab to the rock to eat him up. Seeing this, the alert crab tightened its claws around the heron's long neck and threatened to choke him. Please spare me, cried the scared heron, knowing his game was up. The wise and merciful crab let go of the heron's neck, who promised never to be so deceitful again. The wise crab had saved the day. The Crocodile and the Monkey Once upon a time, on the banks of a mighty river, there was a monkey who lived on a magnificent tree. The tree bore fruits as sweet as nectar, and the monkey lived a happy and content life. Once, a hungry crocodile swam up to the bank of the river. Hello! Try out these fruits, called out the monkey, tossing the juicy fruits to the crocodile. Every day, the crocodile would come to eat the fruits, and soon they became great friends. But the crocodile's wife was very greedy, and wanted to have the monkey for her supper. I want to devour the monkey's heart, for it will be as sweet as the fruit he eats, schemed the wife. Next day, the gullible crocodile invited his dear friend to his house for supper. The poor monkey believed the story and without hesitation jumped on the crocodile's back and off they went to the crocodile's home on the other side of the river. In the middle of the river, the crocodile began sinking deep. The frightened monkey screamed what are you doing? The crocodile said. Forgive me, my friend, but I have to kill you. My wife has heard so much about you, and now she wants to eat your juicy heart. Oh, silly friend, pitted the monkey. Why didn't you say so in the beginning itself? My heart is stored safely in the burrow of the tree. Really? Let's go get it then, said the silly crocodile. And he started swimming back to the tree. Once the crocodile reached the riverbank, the terrified monkey sprang to safety on a high branch. Once out of reach, the monkey yelled at the crocodile. Your wife is a greedy crocodile and you a foolish one. I have only one heart and it's beating inside me. The crocodile was ashamed of what happened and swam back into the sea, having lost a dear friend due to his foolishness. The Talkative Tortoise There once lived three great friends, a pair of geese and a tortoise. One summer, the scorching sun rays dried up their lake and they decided to leave and look for a new lake. But the tortoise could not fly, so the geese thought of an idea where the tortoise 
would have to bite onto a stick, which would be carried by the two geese. The only condition was that the tortoise should not open its mouth, or it would meet a terrible fate. Soon, the geese rose into the sky, with the tortoise holding firmly onto the stick. Remember, no talking," said the geese to the tortoise. On witnessing this, animals on the ground started laughing at the unusual sight. A flying tortoise! They shouted. Unable to control his anxiety, the tortoise spoke out. What are you all laughing about? Oh no! I'm falling! Screamed the helpless tortoise, and so the poor tortoise came crashing to the ground, only to be saved from death by her thick shell. If only I had kept my mouth shut, I would be in a new lake with my friends. Thought the tortoise, as she slowly began. Her journey to go find her friends.